Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another biology video. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite organ in the body, the heart. Uh, specifically, we're going to be focusing on the pathway that blood takes as it goes through the heart. Um, we're, I'm going to give you a basic schematic first, then we're going to go into the details. The basic schematic is as follows. Deoxygenated blood, which is blood uh, that has a low concentration of oxygen because it's already delivered the oxygen to your cells. Deoxygenated blood will return to the heart. It'll then flow through the heart to the lungs to get oxygen return to the heart, and then get pumped to the rest of your body, given, giving all of the cells in your body the oxygen and nutrients that they need. And that's why this is such an essential organ. It is a pump that provides all the nutrients and oxygen, of course, uh, to the cells through the blood. Now, it's really important to make uh, a distinction here between veins and arteries before we get into the details. A vein is a blood vessel that carries blood toward the heart, and an artery is a blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart. Now, a lot of students tend to differentiate these uh, using you know, deoxygenated versus oxygenated blood. Highly, highly unrecommended because there is an exception that we're going to get into. So instead, fo uh, focus on directionality, the direction of the blood flow. Veins take blood toward the heart. Arteries take blood away from the heart. There's actually one exception to that too, ironically, and that's the coronary arteries. Those are the arteries that actually supply the heart muscle itself with blood because it's a muscle it needs blood too. So the coronary arteries, of course, flow to the heart because it's providing the heart with blood. But for the purposes of this video, don't worry about that. We're just going to be focusing on the flow of blood, the pathway of blood through the heart. So let's get started. So first, you could really start at any point because this is very much a cycle. But I like to start by thinking about our cells have used up uh, the oxygen in the blood the blood is now deoxygenated and returning to the heart. That's going to be our starting point. Now, there are two primary methods for returning blood to returning deoxygenated blood to the heart, and that is through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. They're both very large vessels that, and, and they are veins specifically that return deoxygenated blood to the heart. So let's label those. Okay. Now, what's the difference between these two? They're both veins bringing back deoxygenated blood to the heart but the inferior vena cava is going to be bringing deoxygenated blood back to the heart from your lower extremities, whereas the superior vena cava will be doing the same thing, have the same function, but from your upper extremities like your head. Um, and so both of these will return deoxygenated blood to your heart. Where does that deoxygenated blood first go? It first ends up in the right atrium. Okay, so now at this point, the deoxygenated blood has returned to the heart. Uh, from both the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, it is now draining into the right atrium. Now, from the right atrium, it'll pass into, next in the sequence, the right ventricle. And the way that it passes from the right atrium into the right ventricle is through a valve called the tricuspid valve. Now, it's called tricuspid because it has three little leaflets that can open and close. The purpose of a valve, and not only the tricuspid valve, but any valve in the heart, uh, is to prevent backflow of blood. We want blood flowing in one direction and one direction only. We want it going right atrium to right ventricle, not right ventricle to right atrium. And so the presence of the tricuspid valve, the purpose of the tricuspid valve is to prevent that backflow. It allows for unidirectional flow. Okay. So we call this valve the tricuspid valve. Let's label that. Okay. So tricuspid valve. So what's the next step? Now we have all what now we have our blood in the right ventricle, still deoxygenated, right? Which is why I used blue, by the way, it's still, uh, very low concentration of oxygen. The next step, logically, is to get the blood to the lungs. But to get to the lungs, it must first pass through another valve called the pulmonary valve. And that's right here. Let's label that. Okay, so that's the pulmonary valve. And again, just like the tricuspid valve, its purpose is to prevent backflow. You don't want blood going from this pulmonary trunk uh, back into the right ventricle. You want it to be unidirectional. So right ventricle through the pulmonary valve, It'll eventually go through this structure right here and end up at the lungs. Let's draw the lungs real quick. Okay, so I've drawn two lungs, one uh, on the right, one on the left. And the blood, as it, as it passes through the pulmonary valve, will go up this structure and split, right? Going one to the, this would be the patient's left lung and one to the right lung. Okay, and so let's draw some arrows showing that. So it'll split just like that. So what happens next? Now the blood is actually going to enter these little capillaries and, and uh, through diffusion, receive oxygen from, um, 
the alveoli in the lungs. Don't worry about that. I'm going to make a separate video on the respiratory system where we talk about that in detail. But just know that as it enters the lung, let me draw that right here, it'll enter the lung, pick up oxygen on both ends, okay? And then once the blood is now oxygenated, it will return to the heart. And specifically, where will it return? It will return to this chamber right here called the left atrium. Let's draw that, okay? Just for simplicity's sake and for keeping this neat, I'm just drawing one arrow going to the left atrium, but really blood from here and blood from here, from both lungs, will return to the left atrium. I just, if I draw an arrow from that lung, it'll cut through the entire drawing and make everything messy. And we don't want that. Um, so both of these are now draining the oxygenated, newly oxygenated blood into uh, the left vent, the, sorry, left atrium. Let's label that. By the way, I forgot to mention something. These vessels that are carrying blood um, from this structure in blue to the lungs are called pulmonary arteries. And notice they are carrying deoxygenated blood, yet they're arteries. So that's why I said in the beginning, do not make the distinction between artery and vein based on oxygenated or deoxygenated. Make the distinction based on the direction of blood flow. So as just to review, blood goes through the pulmonary valve, up this structure right here to the lung, and it'll go from this structure to the lung through the pulmonary artery. Once it's oxygenated, it'll return to the left atrium via the, what would it be? Pulmonary vein, right? Pulmonary vein is going away from the lung toward the heart. So it's a pulmonary vein from both lungs. Pulmonary veins will drain into the left atrium. So now blood will go from the left atrium into the left ventricle through another valve. That valve is called the bicuspid valve because it has two leaflets or uh, more commonly referred to as the mitral valve. Okay, so left atrium through the mitral or bicuspid valve and now the blood will drain into the left ventricle. Okay, now the blood's in the left ventricle. Now the blood has only one last thing to do. Now that we have our oxygenated blood ready to go, we want to send it off to the rest of the body. And the, the enormous vessel that carries out that task is called the aorta. So how do we get the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta? Of course, there's a valve. So this valve right here is called the aortic valve, and it'll separate the left ventricle from the aorta. And once again, prevent backflow. So let's label that real quick. Okay. And now once the blood is in the aorta um, and has passed through the aortic valve into the aorta, Blood can now be pumped to the rest of the body because the aorta is huge. Uh, blood going to the upper extremities like your head can go through these vessels, whereas it'll, it'll arch downwards to the rest of your body. This is called the aortic arch. So it'll really reach every single cell in your body eventually. Um, the aorta is that powerful. The heart is that powerful. Okay, let's just label this aorta. Okay. And so that's blood flow through the heart. I will review this one more time right now, uh, but if you think you got it, you might as well stop watching now, but I'm going to review it one more time, okay? So, uh, very quick review. Deoxygenated blood through the inferior and superior vena cava drain in the right atrium. Right atrium to right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. Right ventricle to the lungs through the pulmonary valve. Well, sorry. Right ventricle through the pulmonary valve into this structure, and then um, the blood flows to the lungs through the pulmonary artery, arteries. Uh, once oxygenated, the blood will return to the left atrium via the pulmonary veins, right? Flowing away from the lungs to the heart. Left atrium to left ventricle through the mitral or bicuspid valve. And then finally, left ventricle to the aorta through the aortic valve. So that's blood flow through the heart. I really hope that helped and thanks for watching.